Well, even if our reality is what we're defending and we're going into situations trying to defend our reality and our perception of other people's reality isn't matching. So we're then diving into something we call expectations and assumptions, which is really, we all know what assume means, right? But when you have expectations and assumptions on top of demanding that people are living into your reality, that's where we're really getting in trouble. I'm finding it a lot more heightened in the last couple of years where people are demanding that you were seeing and living into each other's reality when the truth is that's actually not the case. So let's start by giving a couple of examples. You know, when we were talking earlier, when we decided that this is the direction we wanted to go, we start to realize that, you know, we often refer to the pandemic over these past three years because it really has been pretty epic over three years now of the shifts, the change, the polarization, the divisiveness, the breakdowns in relationship. And often those breakdowns are caused by a perception that is really created, that perception is created because of the lack of communication or the breakdown in communication. Now, let's just give a couple of examples as we uh, uh, warm up, you know, into this conversation and start to unpack it and get a little bit deeper. And I loved the quick story that you shared about uh, perception and reality around something as simple as parking. So why don't you go ahead, share that parking story, because I think it's a great warm up. Yeah, there's actually two vehicle stories. Um, The parking story was I was running into the grocery store just to pick up a few groceries and the grocery store was packed. So it was that time of day where people are going maybe after work or something and I'm whipping into the parking lot. I've got one of our smaller vehicles and I find a parking stall finally and all the cars are kind of parked willy nilly on an angle and on this, you know, basically all squished in together. So I parked the car and I squeeze out of the vehicle, shut the door run into the grocery store, took a little longer than I thought, which is fine, but it didn't occur to me that it was going to be an issue. So by the time I get out of the grocery store, wander back to my vehicle, I get there and there's some space on either side or whatever. So I start packing the trunk and with my groceries and I look on my windshield and there's a note and I'm thinking, oh, I love note from somebody or maybe it's a ticket. I don't know. So I picked it up and I start reading it and I was blown away by the tone of this note. It was you stupid idiot. How dare you park in the uh, straddling a line, taking up two parking stalls when obviously you can see how crowded the parking lot is or something. But it, I mean, that's the nice version. Well, they threw, yeah, and they threw in there just because you drive a BMW doesn't mean you have the right to take up two stalls. That's exactly right. And that's how that's how it ended. And I'm, I'm gobsmacked thinking and I'm looking around going, what on earth, you know, what reality is this person living into? So anyway, I go to get in the car, pack my vehicles, and this woman comes whipping over. And I guess she's going to really reiterate what an idiot I am. So she goes on this tirade about how dare I, just because I drive an expensive car or whatever. And she and I looked at her and I said, you know, when I arrived here, it was packed. Cars were parked on the angle. At that point, I had no idea I was straddling the yellow line, taking up two stalls. The only way that I realized that is when the other cars left and I saw where my car was sitting. So that's what your reality became. But the truth is that was the reality when I parked. So I chose to park where I could park, thinking I was just going to be a few minutes. So I didn't go into this big, long diatribe. But eventually she apologized. And I think what it really taught me was that when we're judging a situation or a scenario that we think that other people are idiots or they're stupid drivers or women drivers or whatever, is that we never, ever, 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 ever five times, and I learned this from a very big hockey mentor of mine, know what's going on for other people. Or we don't even know what happened five minutes ago, why this idiot chose to park on top of the line and taking up two stalls. She did end up apologizing. I don't know what lesson she got out of it, but the lesson I got out of it is that we never know And when we judge or use that energy or that anger, it's a huge energy leak in our own lives. And the truth is, I was wondering what she was really, really angry at. Well, it's interesting that you share that story because since that time, and that was a few years ago now, when I pull into a parking lot and I see some idiot taking two stalls, Mm -hmm. I step back from it and I really say to myself, well, there's an assumption that, you know, you're driving a big truck, so you take two stalls because you need to, and or that, you know, when you pulled into that stall, it was because of the way the other vehicles were parked, and that was the only space available to you at the time, and that was all just because of the things that had happened that led up to all of these other vehicles that were misaligned with these assigned parking stalls. So that was uh, something that has taken the edge off me when I get into that same jibe or jab, I guess, or whatever. What's the word? I don't know. Uh, when I get 
in, into that space where I'm angry about somebody, how somebody parked, especially when parking is tight. Anyways, so the next story that you shared, which I think is another good one, this goes back to the divisiveness and the polarity that was being kind of felt and was happening through the uh, pandemic when actually everybody was being said, don't cross the provincial borders. And there was... Uh, you know, we spend a lot of time in British Columbia as well as Alberta. We're back and forth. And in British Columbia, it seems that it's quite a different attitude, really, than what was happening in Alberta at the time. So anyways, you had brought a vehicle, one of our vehicles, we were in Alberta, you brought one of the one of our vehicles back to British Columbia. It happened to be in BC at the time. And I, I, you, I think the story is that you walked out and there was a couple of guys hanging around your vehicle that really wanted to have a word with you. So give us a little bit of update on that. Yeah, we had just brought um, one of our vehicles back. So it still had the Alberta plates. And because we're 50-50, basically, we have vehicles that go back and forth to BC all the time to, to respect whatever insurance, etc. We're, we're rule followers on that regard. But the mainstream media at the time was really telling people to vilify other people from other provinces, even from the US. We had the same situation coming from, you know, people seeing people from Alaska or Washington. My story was that I was again, whipped out to wherever London drugs to pick up a few things and came back to the vehicle. And there was two quite burly, obviously burly men standing by the back of the truck waiting for me. And there I went to go. I, I didn't think they were ready to talk to me. And uh, sure enough, they were one of them came up to me and said, listen, you stupid B, get the F back to Alberta. You're ruining what's going on here. You're bringing the virus across the mountains. And he went like on and on and on. And I'm first of all, I didn't understand what he was talking about because we don't watch the mainstream media. And we, at that point, we hadn't been able to go back to back and forth to Alberta as much. So the, the truck didn't, it was an Alberta truck. So, but in this point, we're living in BC. You know, so there was no consideration just because I had a license plate from another province didn't give him license to rip, a, you know, to, to tear a strip off of me. So in that regard, what I got to was his perception and my reality were completely different. And I didn't have a need to defend myself because I've learned a lot from you over the years is that especially with with the, the male female thing and people that were so fired up and upset and angry and scared that had I basically engaged with these guys, I probably would have gotten myself in trouble because they were obviously believing what the mainstream media was telling that, you know, viruses cross borders in vehicles with Alberta plates. So whatever their story was, it really scared me. So as we started to really look into what was going on in these conversations and narratives that were being pushed by the mainstream media, I was having firsthand experience mm -hmm. with that level of uh, anger and that level of discord and that level of how perception can be controlled to force people to shift into a reality that maybe is not grounded in truth. So that's those are two great stories that I wanted to spend a little bit of time on because when we start to understand perception versus reality, when we make assumptions and or we have assumptions and unstated expectations, then our perceptions can change. And that can come from the other side as well. So this was a breakdown of communication. Mm -hmm.